What's happening everyone? Welcome back. I am Adrian and this is What The Pun. Today you join me almost a week into my experience with my very first EV, uh, which is the Peugeot E208 GT line. So today's video I'll be doing a quick update in regards to how I've been uh, getting on with my very first EV. So it's a nice car, there are a few little things that bug me about it but that's not what I'm going to do today, I mean later on I'm going to do a full review of the Peugeot E208. So today let me tell you about a problem. Let me tell you about a problem I have with this electric car and I've only had it for less than a week. It's not specific to the Peugeot E208, but it's generally targeted. But it's generally targeted to the problems I've come across with the charging network. <laughs> so when I'm charging at home, uh, the Peugeot is fine. I don't have any issues with that. Uh, though it would be nice to have my own little EV charging station at home instead of. Uh, using the free pin plug charger for the car at the moment but that's something that can be addressed easily so I feel like in a short space of time I have had this car I can share and feel the pain that some of you EV owners out there have experienced first one I mean before like owning an EV I used to, it used to bug me anyways, and what is this? It's basically when combustion cars park in the EV bays. And now that I'm driving an EV, it's even more frustrating. So in some places it's perfectly fine, uh, cause like when you're going to like a multi-story car park where uh, as part of a shopping mall or whatever, the, the, the security guards in, the, in those uh, multi-story car parts in a shopping center they're, they're totally on it so if they see a combustion car parts in an EV bay they'll get right on top of it but the problem I have seem to come across is is mainly like around like supermarkets and especially IKEA when it's a busy day in IKEA no one cares because the EV bays in IKEA is closest to the exits so you can unload your shopping straight away I can get the convenience but it's annoying, frustrating for an EV driver because you know when I when I've been you know the last few days I've been going to IKEA or Sainsbury's or whatever and I wanna top up even if it's a slow charger, you know, get that little few few extra miles on the car charged up whilst I do a bit of shopping would have been nice and you know having to drive specifically trying to find this EV bay and then to be disappointed that you know that someone else that doesn't have an EV is parked in that bay is very frustrating. My next problem is to do with signage. Signage, signage. <laughs> I feel like in some at some of these places I feel like I'm searching for Wally. Like where is this EV charging bay? Uh, a few times I'm going to look for these rapid charges. I, I, I use a zap map and I feel like, you know, for some of these rapid charges, they're literally located at uh, a hotel. And then what you're driving to, you know, you just reach this hotel and there's literally no signage as to where this rapid charger is going to be. And it turns out a lot of these rapid chargers hiding in these hotels literally at the darkest most furthest like out back place at this hotel you can ever find and you know some signage would help instead of like you're driving to this location you're already like a bit at, uh, you have a bit of anxiety already because you're running low on charge you have maybe 20 miles left in the range don't, don't I doubt you'll be driving 20 miles trying to look for this charger but you're already a bit upset so you can have some anxiety trying to look for this charger and there's no signs as to where 
this charger could be and you're looking around and, and it's frustrating. It's straight up frustrating. And it's not only to do with like, you know, these rapid chargers hidden at the back of hotels. Uh, some shopping malls are guilty of not having very good signs because some, some shopping malls only have electric charging at a very specific car park they have uh, within their, their complex. So you may be going to like the you know most convenient car park within this uh, shopping complex but they just so happen to not have any EV chargers at the car park you've just arrived at. So you're gonna have to, you know, you probably already got a parking, uh, uh, a, a ticket. So then you're gonna have to use that ticket to get back out and then try and locate the next car park that could possibly have the EV charging bays. Okay, so my next problem is to do with the charging network. Luckily for me at the moment, uh, with my car subscription service for the Peugeot E208 with ON2, they have kindly supplied me with uh, car charging subscription services with BP Pulse, InstaVault, and I also have a Shell Recharge uh, cards on the way too. I can only imagine a lot of EV owners don't use any of those services, unless you're someone that makes a, uh, takes a lot of long journeys. Because a lot of people are lucky enough to be living in a house, they should have their own chargers at home. Uh, I can then only imagine people that live in apartments and flats that don't have access to charging uh, for where they park, then their next option is to use these subscription services. Uh, then they'll have to you know, only drive to their closest rapid charger with BP Pulse into the vault or Shell Recharge to be able to charge their car maybe once or twice a week to get a good amount of charge to last them. Um, but I feel like there's too many charging networks out there and they're all, so far, what I've come across is they're in very awkward locations. So imagine if, you know, I plan to travel from my, my place uh, and maybe go on a short trip out into the country or go to the beach then because I drive a EV at the moment with a lower range so mine's about 170 so I feel like if I'm driving anywhere that's you know quite far away that maybe over 200 miles away I have to plan my journey from like one rapid charger to another rapid charger to another rapid charger and then there's the anxiety of hoping that the rapid charges I'm planning to uh, stop off at, the charges are working. For some people that are quite lucky enough to have EVs that have much better range, you know, those that have the two, mid 200s or even higher, then they may not have this problem as much because they may not have to charge as often with a rapid charger if they don't have access to home charging. But currently for myself, uh, my nearest rapid charger hidden at the back of a hotel is almost five miles away. And if you put that into comparison, I have more than 10 petrol stations surrounding me within a two mile radius. So with the problems I mentioned, I don't see them as very like super major problems. They are problems currently for EV owners and I know in time, whether that's three years, five years, these problems won't be as common. For example, like we, we know the, the charging network is constantly being expanded and, and it's growing as we speak right now. Things like signage, uh, when, when there's more EVs on the road, I can only imagine things like that would be addressed, but it's currently a a frustrating thing as an EV owner trying to hunt and search for these uh, bays that are hidden at the back of hotels and and, and yeah once there's more EVs out there I can only imagine these combustion cars they're not going to get away with parking in EV bays you, you're they're, they're coming for you you um 
selfish people. <laughs> but anyways, hope you enjoyed today's video. That's it from, from me this week. And stay tuned. There's more to come with my experience with my very first EV. So if you're not already a subscriber, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell. All right. Thank you very much. Take care. See you next time.